Hi everyone, welcome to AI Crack channel. This is Akash Kangwar and today we'll be studying binomial lecture three. So we'll be talking about application based problems of binomial and also we'll be starting with the basics of series expansion. So let's start the lecture. So we'll be looking at three problems, three types of problems, divisibility and remainder, integral and fraction part and comparing numbers and expressions with larger powers. Okay. So let us start with the first and we'll directly see the problems because these are, these are the kind of problems you'll get in the examination. So let's start with this problem for all n belongs to natural numbers two raised power four n minus 15 n minus one is divisible by now we can see three types of terms over here. The first one is exponential term. Second term is a linear term. Third term is a constant term and there is no commonality between all of them so that we can find out some common factor which is divisible by 225 or 125 or 325 right. So what we'll be doing we'll be using binomial expansion over here. Now we have 15 over n. We can take a hint from here that if I use, if I expand 2 raised to the power 4n by doing 1 plus 1 raised to the power 4n, that won't make much sense because, because we'll not be getting anything related to 15n. But what if I write 2 raised to the power 4n as 50, sorry, 16 raised to the power n, and further I can write it as 1 plus 15 raised to the power n. So that might help in eliminating these terms and we can find some common factor based on which we can find out the divisible uh, the number which is with which this entire expression is being divisible right so let's try to find out this expression so 1 plus 15 raised power n is equals to nc0 dot 1 raised power n dot 15 raised power 0 plus nc1 dot 1 raised power n minus 1 dot 15 raised power 1 plus nc2 dot 1 raised power n minus 2 dot 15 raised power 2 and till ncn dot 1 raised power 0 dot 15 raised power n right this is n now if i try to simplify it further this is nc0 is 1 1 raised power n is 1 and 15 raised power 0 is 1 so basically the first term is 1 only plus nc1 is n dot this is 1 only and this is 15 so second term is 15 n now i can see 15 n in the term the third term would be nc2 which is some integer dot 1 multiplied by 15 square and so on so forth. The n term would be ncn dot 15 raised to the power n. Now the actual term was 2 raised to the power 4 n minus 15 n minus 1. So that was 1 plus 15 raised to the power n plus sorry minus 15 n minus 1. Now we have actually got this term. 1 plus 15 n plus nc2 dot 15 square till nc n dot 15 raised power n minus 15 n minus 1. So this and this gets cancelled and this also this also gets cancelled right. So we are getting some integers multiplied by 15 square plus some integer multiplied by 15 cube, 15 cube plus some integer multiplied by 15 raised power n. So basically I can see 15 square is a common term nc2 plus nc3 dot 15 till ncn dot 15 is for n minus 2. Now we might not know this term is divisible by 15 or not or by any other number we might not know but we definitely know for sure that this is this entire expression is absolutely divisible by 15 is part 2. So basically our answer is 225. Now let us look at this example. What is the reminder when 5 is per 99 is divided by 26. Now again we have a different number over here and we have a different number over here and there is kind of no correlation between at first instance there is no correlation between these two numbers 5 and 26 but what if i write 5 raised to the power 99 as 5 dot 5 raised to the power 98 and that would become 5 dot 25 raised to the power 49 now i can see some kind of correlation just like in the previous example what we did we tried to relate 15 and 16 from here Similarly, I can try to relate 25 and 26. How can we do that? That would become 5 times 20, 1 plus, sorry, 26 minus 1 raised to the power 49. And that would give me some kind of numbers in terms of 26, right? Now I can definitely see if it's divisible by 26 or not. And if it's not, then what is the reminder? Right? So let's try to write this expression. So 5 times 26 minus 1 raised to the power 49. And that is equals to. 5 times 
49 c0 dot 26 raised power 49 dot minus 1 raised power 0 plus 49 c1 dot 26 raised power 48 dot minus 1 raised power 1 till 49 c49 dot 26 raised power 0 dot minus 1 raised power 49 okay so this is the term now, except this last term, every other term will be having a factor of 26 because this is 26 raised to the power 49, this is 26 raised to the power 48, and before this, the penultimate term would be 26 raised to the power 1 dot minus 1 raised to the power 48 uh, multiplied by 49c48, right? So that would also be having a factor of 26, but this last term will not be having. So every other term is divisible by 26. So we can write this in two parts. So that would become, so basically, 5 twi times 26 minus 1 raised power 49 equals to 5 times some 26 times k plus 5 times and this term is this is 1 1 dot this is again 1 and this is minus 1 so basically minus 1 now that would become 5 dot 26 dot k minus 5 now we can see that this term is divisible by 26 and this term is not so basically this is a reminder but we cannot report negative reminder. So we'll add, I'll, I'll take 126 from here. So basically one factor of 26 from here and add it to it. So that would give me 26 minus five, that is 21. So 21 is our reminder. Now let's start the discussion of the second category of questions. That is the integral and fraction part questions. So the question is the integer part of three plus two root two raised power n is an even integer or integer zero and nothing can be said. So before starting with that, we must know that any fractional number or fraction part function, we know that the range of this f is less than less than one and greater than equals to zero. We know that, right? And also, we know that let's say I'm talking about two root two over here. So two root two is two multi two multiplied by one point four one four dot dot dot, and that gives me two point eight two eight dot dot dot. So this can be further written as 2 plus 0 0.828, right? Now this portion is called as fractional part or F and this called as I. So I can write any number of this kind of format in two parts. The first is integral part and the second part is fraction part. So let's say 3 plus 2 root 2 raised to power n equals to I plus F. I is the integral part, F, the, F is the fraction part. Now, if I try to write 3 minus 2 root 2, and if I do the rough calculations, I'll be getting 3 minus 2.828. Again, the difference between them is a fractional quantity because that comes under the range of 0 to 1, right? So any fractional number raised per some integer, that would also be given positive integer, that to positive integer, that would also become a little lesser fractional number, right? So let's call that as f dash. And this is f dash, right? If I try to add both of them, what I'll be getting, let's try to expand 3 plus 2 root 2 raised power n first. I'll be getting nc0 dot 3 raised power n dot 2 root 2 raised power 1, sorry, 0, plus nc1 dot 3 raised power n dot 2 root 2 raised power 1, plus, n, plus nc2 dot 3 raised power it's n minus one over here. n minus two dot two root two raised power two and till n c n dot three raised power zero dot two root two raised power n, right? And similarly, if I write three minus two root two raised power n, I'll be getting n c zero dot three raised power n dot two minus two root two raised power zero plus n c one dot three raised power n minus one dot minus two root two raised power one plus nc two dot three raised power n minus two dot minus two root minus two root two raised power two till nc n dot three raised power zero dot minus two root two raised power n. Now if I add both of them, I can clearly see that this term and this term will get cancelled because it has a negative number over here and that too. Uh, raised to power which is an odd number so one is an odd number similarly you'll get terms uh, minus 2 root 2 raised power 3 minus 2 root 2 raised power 5 so those terms will get cancelled if i add both of them so i'll be getting 
i plus f plus f dash equals to two times these numbers n c zero dot three raised power n dot two root two raised power zero plus n c two dot three raised power n minus two dot two root two raised power two till n c till till the end we 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 don't know n is an even number or a odd number so till the end we cannot write the number over here okay so but the main point is you are getting some integer over here these are all the integer integral numbers and multiplied by 2 so basically this is an even integer and if this is an even integer so this should also be an even integer so that would be i plus f plus f dash should be even integer so basically f plus f dash should be integer because this is integer so this summation should also be integer to make this an even integer right so f plus f dash should be an integer now f is always less than 1 and also f dash is always always less than 1 and greater than 0 greater than 0 if i add both of them the only possibility of the summation is f plus f dash should be 1 so they are nothing but they are equals to 1 so i plus 1 equals to some even integer So i should be odd integer. So i was the integer, the integral part of three plus two root two. So that is an odd integer. So this is a very standard process to solve such questions. In every type, in every type of question of this sort, we have to start with this only. Now let's look at the third category where we have to make the comparisons of the numbers. Now you must be seeing that. Three plus two root two, three minus two root two. So basically, one plus x, one minus x. These kind of terms come in handy, come in handy a lot in a lot of problems, right? So even over here, if I try to see that, I'll see hundred minus one raised power fifty, hundred raised power fifty, and hundred plus one raised power fifty. And I'll have to do something of subtraction and addition in in these terms to find out the conclusion. So let us start with this question: larger of ninety nine raised power fifty plus hundred raised power fifty and hundred one raised power fifty is. so now remember one thing whenever we compare two functions two uh, different kind of functions where we cannot you know just directly do it mathematically in a normal process for example if i am taking two functions c raised power x and i am taking the other function as x square and if i have to compare both of them which one is bigger at certain value of x what i'll be doing i'll be generating a new function fx that is e raised power x minus x square and i'll see at what values the the difference is becoming positive and uh, the difference is becoming negative or i'll try to differentiate and do the eod thing right so this is a very standard process now over here we have to make certain comparisons now we also know that if i write this as 1 plus 100 raised power 50 and if i write this as uh, 100 minus 1 raised power 50 and if i do addition or subtraction over here then definitely i can make a comparison but in this case we have to make the comparisons so that is why i'll be subtracting and that might give me some kind of conclusion right so that is my hypothesis to start with so let's write 101 plus 101 raised power 50 as 1 plus 100 raised power 50 and that would give let's try to write the opposite that would give me 100 minus 1 100 plus 1 raised power 50 now that would give me 50 c0 dot 100 raised power 50 dot 1 pi raised power 0 Plus 50 c1 dot 100 raised power 49 dot 1 raised power 1 plus 50 c2 dot 100 raised power 48 dot 1 square and till 50 c50 dot 100 raised power 0 dot 1 raised power 50. Right. Now similarly, if I write 100 minus 1 raised power 50, I'll be getting 50 c0. Dot hundred raised power fifty dot minus one raised power zero plus fifty c one dot hundred raised power forty nine dot minus one raised power one till fifty c fifty dot hundred raised power zero dot minus one raised power fifty. Now I'll subtract both of them. I'll do the subtraction. Now in the previous case we did the addition, so that is why the odd terms got. Added the the terms with the odd powers got added, but over here since we are doing the subtraction, so terms with the even power, so the zero power, two power, they'll get cancelled because minus one is plus zero is one is plus zero only. So the remaining terms are same, so this will get cancelled out. So this term and this term will get cancelled out. 
this term and the over a second term will get cancelled out and the terms with the negative power will get doubled right so the difference would be so basically i'll write it like 100 101 one raised power 50 minus 99 raised power 50 that would give me two times two times of this 50 c1 dot 100 raised power 49 dot just don't write one because it's one raised power something similarly 50 c3 dot 100 raised power 47 till 50 C forty nine dot hundred is per. So these are the terms we'll be getting. Now, if I just try to look at this number, so let's rewrite it in the new page. One zero one raised power fifty minus ninety nine raised power fifty equals to. We're getting two into fifty C one is fifty into hundred is per forty nine plus some integers. This two multiplied by this term plus this term plus some integers, right? We are getting this kind of thing. So two into fifty is hundred. Hundred into hundred raised power forty nine. That is hundred raised power fifty plus some integers. So hundred one raised power fifty minus ninety nine raised power fifty equals to this. Basically, hundred one raised power fifty equals to hundred raised power fifty plus ninety nine raised power fifty plus some additional integers i. Now we can clearly see that. 101 raised power 50 is greater than 100 raised power 50 plus 99 raised power 50 because we have some additional terms over here for 101 raised power 50, right? So this is how you have to do it. Think in terms of 1 plus x and 1 minus x, doing addition, subtraction, and that would fetch you the answer. 